It's Tuesday, November 24th, and here we are uh, starting to work again on the truss mounting to the forward spar. Something I've had to figure out is um, I need to that nut, the nuts that secure that uh, truss to the spar need to be down, torqued down to spec. And according to AC43.13, uh, the AN5 with a shear nut um, range is 60 to 85 inch pounds. But I can't get a torque wrench into that space to fit a socket on there and um, do the torque. So I've got a uh, crow's foot half inch crow's foot with a, I couldn't, I couldn't find any crow's foot that have a, that fit a quarter inch. So we've got a quarter to a three eighths adapter on this torque wrench. I've got that on there. So uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of uh, you and I, or some of you already know how to do this. And this is something I had to review and make sure I was getting it right. But, so what happens when you want to do a torque using an extension off here, you've actually increased the length of the arm that you're using to apply that torque. So what you have to do is take this distance and basically add it on to the distance that you're uh, applying uh, on the arm. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I find that the desired torque range for an AN5 with a shear nut is 60 to 85 inch pounds. So I'm gonna just go to 85 uh, on my calculations. The torque wrench from the center of the ratchet to the reference point in the handle is uh, 8.25. And the reason I have 9.25 written on here is because I used my, um, used my tape measure and I don't, I don't ever measure from the very end. I always start at the one inch mark and measure that distance. So it was 9.25 minus one, 8.25 inches. Uh, also measured the drag torque. You have to take an account for drag torque from those nuts because it's got that plastic insert or nylon insert that creates drag while you're applying the nut to the bolt. So you have to account for that. Calculate that out at, um, or I measured that out at 25 inch pounds uh, on that particular bolt and nut combo. So we're 85 inch pounds plus 25 inch pounds of drag gives us a target torque on the wrench of 110 inch pounds. But we've lengthened the arm, so we actually need less torque uh, on the setting. So how do you do that? You take your desired uh, torque times the length of the arm of the original of the wrench as it sits, so 8.25. You divide that by the length of the wrench, 8.25, plus the, um, the, effective, the effective extension, which I measured out at 0.825, um, gives us 9.05, so we're 9 07.5 divided by 90, 9.075, which hand, uh, handily, handily, uh, conveniently comes out to 100 inch pounds. So if we want to apply a target torque of 110 inch pounds to that nut with an extension, we're setting our torque wrench to a setting of 100 inch pounds. So that's your math lesson for the day. So we get started and um, get those torqued down and see how it goes. I started putting this video together and I realized uh, that I completely skipped over recording any of the um, process of actually torquing down those those bolts or those nuts onto the truss to spar fitting. Um, but my intention is that I will uh, cover that when we do the other wing. I generally like to not do a lot of video or photo type stuff while we're doing something for the first time just to make sure we're getting it right and that I'm not having to worry about video. So uh, you'll see a little more expanded um, more expanded coverage when we do that uh, when we do the right wing. Wrapping up. 
that stu that stupid heater. Wrapping up for the day, uh, we put about two hours in today. Um, a good chunk of that was was doing some looking at the text manual to verify mm -hmm. verify next things. Steps. Yeah, some next steps. Um, we've got last night. Um, we did the uh, priming for some of these parts. You can't really see it. I've got it in the bag here, but it's the flap hinges. These flap hinges all got primed. Uh, we've got the aileron hinges primed. Next step uh, in the book says that these get drilled out to three sixteenths. Five sixteenths? Five, yeah, that's a, yeah. Five sixteenths, yeah. That's right, because the, the flange bushing, the bronze bushing is a three sixteenths, okay. So uh, one of the things that's explicit in the instructions is that if when you put the bronze bushing in here, you're supposed to drill these out or ream them out, final size them out to a uh, five, six, five sixteenths. And if there is any play in the bushing, when you insert the bushing, if there's any play in there, this part has to be replaced. You gotta, you gotta start over. So I measured these out, I uh, got my caliper out and that hole, as it sits right now, is 0 .300. Outside diameter, the bushing is 0 .313. So we're 13 thousandths difference. Um, and, point, and I measured my um, reamer, and that is um, 0 .313. It's that exact same size. So I'm a little worried that having the hole exactly the same size as the outside diameter of the bushing is gonna not be adequate. Uh, there might be some play in there. I don't wanna have to replace these. So what I'm thinking, we're gonna see if we can press the bushings in. And if any of you know, you know 13 thou is, uh, if that's too tight to put that bushing in, let me know. Uh, we're not gonna be back up here. We got holiday stuff going on, so we're not gonna be up here till the uh, end of next week, maybe. Um, but yeah, kind of looking for a little guidance on that. If you, if any of you have some advice, I uh, would appreciate it. But I'm thinking pressing in those, uh, pressing in that bushing to here and then ream the bushing, cause that's gonna shrink that bushing down. So ream that bushing out to a, uh, a and three, which we came to discover when I went to get my 3 16 reamer. And I don't have one. I don't know how uh, out of all them tools that I've got, all them reamers and drill bits and everything, I did not get a 3 16 reamer. So we'll get an order in on one of those. Um, and also gonna probably pick up a digital torque adapter um, just to have one on hand in case I need one. Uh, so that's what's going on with that stuff. We got our truss mounted to the left strut, I mean the left uh, spar, left forward spar. We got that done today. Got these torqued down to a hundred, a hundred inch pounds. Um, and that was including uh, the spec is 80, 80 inch pounds max torque, uh, plus your drag torque from the shear nut, which was 25 inch pounds. Did I just say foot pounds? I think I did, inch pounds. Uh, so this goes down and it came out to 100 inch pounds that we're torquing that on. So that's done, both sides. Um, I decided to put some torque lock uh, on these these inside ones just for future inspection. Uh, I've got some torque lock on there. Can't get any, not gonna be able to get in there to inspect that anyways. I didn't do it from the other side. And I did, uh, we did get these outside bolts. Uh, we got those nuts torqued down to uh, 100 inch pounds also, but couldn't get, a, couldn't get the torque wrench in side to fit in there. I just couldn't get it to work. So we ended up having to torque it from this side, which I know is not that's not the kosher way to do it, but uh, that's that's what we did. Uh, it worked out. It's it's okay. I'm, there's maybe a few inch pounds more drag on that bolt going through there, but I don't, it's it's not enough to make any difference on this. But it's we're good there. So that's that. 
what else did we do? Studied, studied, studied. Studied. Uh, we poured over uh, some of the plans here to make sure that we were okay on uh, on those on all of these uh, hinge arms. Yeah, hinge arms. Uh, make sure everything was good there. The orientation of the bushings, but that's going to come later when we get there. But well, that's about that's about it uh, on that. So we're going to be off for probably over a week. It's going to be before we get back up here. Um, so we're going to have uh, the Thanksgiving holiday, and uh, yeah, well. Plus, gives me time to order some more tools. Uh, that's that's not a bad thing. More tools, yay! So, appreciate you watching the video. Give me a thumbs up on this if uh, if you like it. And uh, yeah, I guess I just said ha uh, thanks for watching. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving. Um, and that's it for now. Oh yeah, something that that you always hear in the video, or probably not always, but a lot of times you're probably hearing is that clicking or chirping sound. It's our hanger heat up here. Whenever that thing shuts off, as that cools off, that radiant heater, it, I don't know, I call it a chirp. It goes like a click, you know, kind of a sound. Um, you hear that on the videos. I don't know if anybody's wondering what that noise is, but it always seems to come at the most inopportune time when I'm saying something, and it's fairly loud and gets picked up on the camera. But anyways, that's it for now.